Why do we study the ocean? To put it simply, because the ocean drives our climate. This is a story of discovery, of how we observe the ocean from large scales to small scales, from coarse satellite imagery to ultra-high resolution surface maps. Our team from Columbia University is here aboard the RV Falcor to understand how the ocean is changing on a multitude of spatial and temporal scales, to observe how the ocean's ecosystem adapts and survives in a changing climate. The ocean is a very dynamic environment, and our method for making measurements needs to be equally dynamic to react at a moment's notice. The air to sea story starts and ends with a map. From a low resolution satellite map with a scale of hundreds of kilometers to a high resolution map of micro turbulence with a scale of millimeters. What's really exciting is how we get from one to the other. This is when the UAVs come into play. Deploying these autonomous aircraft each equipped with specialized sensors and equipment, we're able to map a very large area efficiently and with considerably greater resolution than the satellite imagery. A few days ago, we crossed over a very large pumice patch and it was about 10 miles from the ship. Uh, we decided it was interesting enough to go send everything over there. So we picked up all the other scientific equipment, SPIP and Sniffle and the catamaran and we hightailed it over to the pumice patch where everything got thrown back in the water and we were able to map that out from the air while the, all the other scientific equipment on the ship and, and floating around the ship were able to capture that data as well. You wouldn't have never known that patch was just 10 miles away um, and a valuable scientific target. Thanks to our ability to act dynamically using real-time data, we tracked down pumice, which was likely to be the remnants of an underwater eruption near Tonga in August of 2019. The data we collect at times like this, such as thermal imaging and hyperspectral color imagery shown here, allows us to understand the effect of surface material, in this case the pumice, on sea surface temperature. Hi, my name is Anna, and this is our infrared radiometer. It's one of the instruments we have mounted on the ship and it gives us very high resolution imagery of the sea surface temperature. So on the computer, we're able to see a 3 by 3 meter field of view of the sea surface temperature. And in that view, you can see all sorts of processes happening. Um, convection cells bringing relatively warm subsurface water uh, and disrupting the cool skin. Uh, eddies, uh, waves breaking, sea foam. Um, they all have different temperature signals. And it's all very clear in IR imagery. Altogether, this data helps us build up a transformational view of the sea surface microlayer in groundbreaking detail, one which will eventually allow us to understand how the ocean and the atmosphere interact and how the ocean's ecosystem adapts and survives in a changing climate.